interesting in the content that I create. So please make sure that um, in addition to connecting here on HAPS or wherever you are tuning in from, if it's Twitter or um, Twitch. Oh, darn, I'm sorry. People on Twitch, I did not change the stream name. I'm, I'm not doing a ukulele broadcast, but maybe after this, I'll go on Twitch and do a ukulele broadcast to make up for this. <laughs> Hi, Peter. How's it going? Um, so yeah, today I'm going to go over the reveal. Hi, Frank. How's it going? Of um, the this week's week five and toe wordle. And I'm happy to share that I, um, it looks like this screen sharing is working. So for anyone who didn't yet do it, do this um, Ento Wordle. Um, I'm going, going to just for fun share it here. So if you, so with the Ento Wordle that I've been doing each week, and plan to continue to do. Um, well, first of all, I'm going to, I'm going to switch now that we've hit the fifth week, I'm going to switch for the sixth week to be, to do six letter words. Cause, um, there are only so many five letter entomology specific words, and there's a lot of really great ones that have six letters that will be really fun to check out and talk about. Um, one thing that I think is pretty cool about this, uh, this week's Ento Wordle is that if you were to um, put in, you just solved it, awesome. Um, um, if you were to put in the Ento Wordle, um, thanks David, hi David. If, you're, if you were to use New York Times, or I think it's New York Times who posted like the best opening words for a Wordle, one of them is odor, oter, um, I'll type it in here, O-A-T-E-R. Oter. Um, and if you entered that, because it has a lot of words that are commonly found in, a lot of letters that are commonly found in many words, you don't get, none of those show up as being in this week's Wordle. So it is a unique one. It's one that people have definitely, it's not like super obscure, like people hear this word in different contexts for different reasons beyond entomology, like maybe in uh, fantasy worlds, for example. Um, I don't fully understand the exact meaning of it in those sorts of worlds, but um, hi, Robert. Um, sorry that the notification on Twitch says ukulele. I'll do a ukulele broadcast later to make up for that. <laughs> and plus, because I've been meaning to anyway, because I just have fun with that and want to improve. And when I play the ukulele, I may as well stream it, I guess. Why not? <laughs> Um, anyway, so yeah, odor is oter. Do you guys know what oter means? If you're familiar with it or not, um, it means refers to uh, Western movies because Western movies involve like Western cowboy movies involve horses and horses eat a lot of oats. So odors, oters is um, a word that I did not know, but my grandmother knew it. I have never heard of that word before. Um, okay. Uh, Robert, did you do the Wordle, Ento Wordle? Hopefully um, you did, and if you didn't, you can do it right now. Go over on my Twitter and find the link, or look out for next week's, where we are going to switch into six-letter words. Okay, so I just thought it was fun that it didn't contain any of these common words. Um, what other letters does it not contain? It also doesn't contain, um, I'm trying to think of a word that it, that does not contain the letters. Um, uh, <laughs> can you guys think of one? You haven't done it. Oh, okay. Well, we're, I'm about to share a bunch of pictures that, um, entomology pictures that relate to the word. So hang tight. Okay. Frank, you just, you did this. And David, I'm guessing you did too. Can you guys think of a word that does not include those letters? So this is the, the other version of Ento, reverse anti-Ento Wordle game. Um, hmm. Maybe. Um. Trying to think. 
think. Well, oh, that this does include a letter in it. Oh, water also had none. Oh, yeah. Well, odor is almost water, isn't it? Just one letter off. Just kind of interesting, too. Oh, here, actually. Busks. Relates to playing the ukulele. That's one that also doesn't have any of the letters. Um, uh, oh, here, I just thought of another one. No, this one does have a letter. I'm just going to do it anyway so we can get to the what the what the reveal is. Pinch. Oh, it has a bunch of them, actually. Anyway, the answer to this week's Ento Wordle is... Dun, 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 dun. Nymph. Um, so, nymph, how does that relate to entomology? Let me switch up what we're looking at now. All right, so from previous broadcast we saw um I shared this in a previous broadcast I forget why why I brought it up but this is an example of the ento wordle unless I don't know this species well and it does have like a more developed form but nymph 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 here's a definite nymph right here very well camouflaged nymph nymphs are the immature stage of Insects that don't go through complete metamorphosis. So insects that don't go through complete metamorphosis um, are, oh, crown, is it crown? Flam oh, the flamingo bug, yeah, the pink one. Lychee bug, le le lychee nymph. And here's a katydid nymph. And um, so, yeah, so it's, Nymph is a word for immature insects that are not adults yet that don't go through complete metamorphosis. So complete metamorphosis is what happens with beetles, with butterflies, with flies, where they have those four distinct life stages. Even fleas as well, uh, unpopular one, <laughs> um, goes, they go through complete metamorphosis where they have an egg stage, a larval stage, a pupal stage, and an adult stage that usually has wings. In the case of other insects like grasshoppers, katydids, and crickets, here's a katydid. Also, in other, with other insects like dragonflies, for example, um, and mayflies, and stink bugs, and um, that's what I can think of off the top of my head, but there's probably others too. Um, they go through what's called incomplete metamorphosis, or he their hemimetabolis is another word, hemi meaning half, just like hemisphere. We are in, I'm in the Western Hemisphere, and you might be in the Eastern Hemisphere. So hemi uh, hemimetabolis like, uh, refers to the incomplete metamorphosis, where they have three life stages usually, which is the egg, the nymph, and the adult. Um, Stink bugs, yeah, oh yeah, stink bugs, yes, they also have nymphs. So anything in the hemiptera family is hemimetabolous, so cicadas as well. And one feature you can notice with hemi, with nymphs is that they often, one giveaway for them being a nymph is that they will oftentimes have these little wing pads. So on this katydid here, you can, if you look closely, you can see these two little, like, almost look like petals. Those are little baby wings. You can call them baby wings. And every time that this kitty did molts on its way to adulthood, those wing pads are going to grow and grow and grow until it gets to its final stage where it molts into to an adult and it's no longer a nymph. Okay, so going along with that, let me share. Uh, so here are some other examples of nymphs. Another popular example. Wait, Oh yeah, okay. Um, is the cicada. So here's a cicada I photographed this past year, one of the periodical 17-year cicadas. They are an example of an insect that goes through a nymphal stage. So oftentimes the nymph doesn't look super different from the adult. And you can really see the resemblance here between 
the nymph where it has that chunky abdomen. You can see a bit of the reminiscent wing pads. You can see the arms and a little bit of the leftover eye on that exoskeleton or the exuvia that's left on the leaf. And the adult is hanging there and you can really see the similarities where with um, butterflies and caterpillars, they look totally different. And also there's no sign of wing pads in a caterpillar um, unless you, of course, dig in there. Um, or dissect it perhaps, or, um, and look at the genes and the different sections where they will be one time soon. Uh, and then, um, like same with the beetles, they have got grub stages which are completely different from their adult stage. And then also uh, flies, famously flies, that's probably a really easy one for to think about because everyone knows what a maggot looks like. Um, even if maybe you don't want to know what a maggot looks like and they look so different from a fly but it's not the case with nymphs. Um, here's a really nice photo. I love this photo. I, f I photographed it this past summer also which shows a bunch of different nymphs that just hatch from their eggs. Uh, I photographed this on the underside of a red bow leaf in Michigan. You can see the white eggs in the center clustered and then you can see nymphs in a couple of different um, stages. So, sorry, I was just thinking of another word that I want to do that this is really good for. <laughs> I won't say it out loud just in case I use it next week or the week after, but this shows a bunch of, oh, maybe I'll just use it anyway because I can't help it. <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, Walter, hi. I saw you're coming, recovering from a surgery. I hope it's coming along well. I don't know the details about it, but I hope you're doing well. Uh, but yeah, these are some stink bug nymphs. And um, the you can see there's two different um, instars or two different stages. Instar is a great entomortal word because it's I-N-S. Oh, no. It's six letters in star yeah that's six letters yeah there's a lot more six letter words than five letter words for entomology okay um yeah so you can see these are all the same species they're probably all siblings but it looks like they're probably different life stages a little bit like developmental stages like older siblings younger siblings situation where the little red ones are younger uh probably maybe yeah smaller younger instar and then the light pink ones that are larger in the top right are freshly emerged pro probably freshly molted into their next instar their next stage of development um, as they make their way towards adulthood and then those darker ones are the oldest siblings who um, are in a um, older instar than the little red ones and also but also like different from the pink ones in the upper right in that they have not freshly molted. They already molted, time has passed, their exoskeleton has sclerotized or hardened and they're ready to, they're all ready to go and face the world in their tough exoskeleton. Um, oh wow, reattached retina, wow. Oh I can't even imagine what that surgery must be like. My dad has had some eye surgery and it's just so wild how you have to keep your eye open like while laser is going into your eye as they like fix stuff I just don't understand it seems very magical but also really freaky as a patient um so so yeah so these are some nymphs and David Howden in the chat is asking I wonder what the reason for giving this name to insects was something to do with the mythical ones being associated with forests and trees etc yeah, I wonder about that too. I don't really know. Um, and, but it's a great question. Yeah. Um, maybe we can ask her on Twitter, see if we can find someone who can give us clarification on that because it's a very curious thing. Okay. So also this is all not to be confused with uh, Nymphalis. So here's a a butterfly specimen I photographed at the Academy of Natural Sciences that is called Nymphalis. Wait, 
and, wait, I can't read. I forget the epithet. Oh, Antiopa. That's the specific epithet. Nymphalos Antiopa, which is the morning cloak butterfly. Butterfly, you can tell it's a butterfly, not a moth, because it has those knobs at the end of its antenna. doesn't just taper off like a string. And yeah, so this is, that's not the word. But this is, I don't know why this is called Nymphalis. It might be like a similar, like, woodsy origin, like nymph, but I don't really know. Okay, here's another nymph. You can see its cute little wing pads. This is a Katie did. Cute little wing pad alert um, on the back of its body. Um, there will be some cases. What I like to uh, let people know is that with insects, if it has wings, uh, like fully developed wings, it's an adult, it's never going to molt again in its life. But if it doesn't have wings yet, it might, it's probably not an adult, but not 100% because some species always have little stubby wings, but not all. Or some species are, have no wings, they're absent when it, absent wings, they don't have any wings as an adult. And so sometimes you really have to know the species to really 100% know if it's if it's still a nymph and not an adult, but generally, most of the time, if it has little stubby wing pads, then it's um, a nymph. Um, hey, Aiden, how's it going? Oh, wow, that's great that you didn't have to worry about moving your eye during that surgery. Phew. Um, so do they do anything with these half wings? Or these underdeveloped wings is a question coming in from Frank Mann. And no, not that I know of. I mean, a lot of the time they're going to be... So um, we're going to dive into my photo library too. I just typed in the word nymph in the chat. Not in the chat, in, the, um, in my photo library. So let's go over. You guys can get a look into the behind the scenes of my photography. Switching over, oops. What's nice is that, I don't know what the difference is between the other weeks and this week, but um, screen sharing is working for me this week. So that's really convenient. Although I didn't, because I didn't expect it to, I don't have any like insect lined up to like share with you guys the scope this week maybe for a future week. Okay, so here's a nymph and you can see it's little tiny wing pads on its back. This is a, this insect is um, one that's featured in my Backyard Bugs of Philadelphia book. Um, I mean, the only thing I can think of when it comes to, and here's one that doesn't even really have wing pads yet. Um, box elder bug, by the way. Um, the one thing I can think of when it comes to like if they give any benefit before their fully fledged wings is maybe it's just one more thing that can have different colors or shapes to affect the camouflage or aprosomatic coloration of the insect. Let's zoom back out. So your box elder bug nymph walking around. All right, let me see if there's I don't, I think this is a nymph too, of a mealybug, um, flattity, and it's all fuzzy and, um, it looks, this one does look really different now, like in the stage versus when it's an adult. All right. Um, here is another image. I don't, so this one, I'm not sure about these ones if they do oh i'm not sorry if it's not very clear coming through i think it might be because that a couple of these photographs i'm sharing are, are actually not are on an external hard drive that's not connected to my computer but here are some more um little stink bug nymphs that are all huddled together and they have, definitely have an interesting coloration i think they're so young they don't even have visible wing pads yet um Oh, here we go. We have an answer from David. David says, Nymphalis comes from nymph. Linnaeus used nymph mythological names for a group of butterflies. Oh, yeah. Nymphalis, which we showed earlier. And that genus is derived from that. 
Um, here's another interesting little nymph. You can clearly see the wing pads here. And there's interesting coloration on the wing pads too, which kind of go along with the coloring on the legs, which is interesting. And then here's another type of, another nymph of, um, what's the name of this one? I forget the scientific name off the top of my head, but this is a type of assassin bug that is green as a nymph, but then as an adult, it, had, you can, it clearly has wings. Um, here's a molt from it this growing youngster. Um, this is a, I, I featured this on the broadcast a while back and this is, this group Zealous, I think is the genus, is known for having those like sticky front legs. See how, see all those, um, those CD that they're covered with sticky substance to help it catch its prey. Like sticky trap. We use sticky, some people use sticky traps to catch bugs. This um, assassin bug also uses sticky traps on its legs to catch bugs. Oh, got some Shakespeare in the chat. Soft you now, fair Ophelia. Nymph, in thy horizons be all thy sins remembered. Kochi Poo, hello, welcome. All right. So, all right, this ha hashtag not a nymph. I don't know why this is coming up as nymph on in my search of my library. Maybe it has to do with the title, maybe. It got, maybe it got paired with other things. This is a saw fly larva. Definitely not a nymph. And you can see there's no, no like adult characteristics at all on this insect. It's just completely like a leaf munching machine little leaf munching sawfly machine. Not to be confused with the caterpillar, even though it looks like a caterpillar, convergent evolution there. Nomph, a nomming nymph. Yeah. Oh, hi, Edward. Cheers. Glad to have you here. Good to see you. Hope you're well. Thanks for the, for buying me a coffee yesterday or the other day. Sorry. Um, Kochi Poo, what, what insects or bugs do you like? I mean, you must like butterflies. Unless you are just kidding when you come in and say that. <laughs> okay, aren't these ones cute though? Look at those little eyes on the head. Okay, let's get back to the nymph. So look at the way it curls around the leaf, like playing hide and seek. Very cute, very cute. Oops, zoomed in too much. Wait, let's get a better. There we go. Something like that. Little shy guy. Okay. Oh, sweet, Kochi. Very cool. Do, is it a certain kind of butterfly out of curiosity? There was a while when I, let's get, okay, let's get back to the nymphs for reals. Okay. So here's not a nymph. Here's an adult that used to be a nymph. This is a sharpshooter insect. When I first found one in my backyard, I was like, oh my gosh, like this looks like it doesn't belong here. It looks too, in Philadelphia, I was like, it looks too like, like it's from the tropics or something, like all those colors, but it's, it belongs around, it's native around the Northeastern area um, of the USA. Um, called a sharpshooter because the damage it inflicts upon plants looks like someone took a little BB gun and was shooting the plant has a QR code on its back. <laughs> yeah, it looks like something some something to decipher. Yeah, there was a while Kochi Poo and I wanted to do I'm still interested in doing this. Um but there is there, there actually is an entomologist who did do a project looking at tattoos. People who have insect tattoos. Um I don't know what she looked at regarding that. But I've always been curious to do like to survey people with insect tattoos to see what sort of bugs they get and what it means to them and just kind of explore that because I think it's they they're cool stories and things to go along with that um so there's someone who has a tattoo of a butterfly that they where they use the reference from one of my photos for it 
And I know that because the shadowing is the same as the image. And that was pretty cool to see. I stumbled upon it on Insta Instagram. Okay, let's find some more nymphs. Oh, here's a big pile of nymph. And you can really distinctly see there. Um, I feel like this is definitely one of those photos that people who are can get a little squeamish about bugs could be like, ah, about. But here's a bunch of, just think of it as a big, big pile of happy siblings all together on a milkweed pod. This is on a milkweed plant. These are milkweed bugs. And they're probably all siblings just like, I don't know, aggregating for maybe strength in numbers, protection that way. Anyway, big party, big family party right there on the plant. Um, let's see, is this a nymph? Hi, Heavenly, how are you? I am interested, I'm interested in getting a tattoo. Kochi is saying you should get one. Um, I'm like such an indecisive person sometimes though, like I can't really decide what I want, but, and also I like get nervous about getting a tattoo because of how permanent it is, I suppose. But I feel like in the long run, it'd be nice to have, um, yeah, but I can't decide. Uh, Heavenly, Heavenly is saying, don't those like dandelion. Um, maybe, I don't know. I, I'm curious to know what, what insect you're thinking of. I'm not familiar with red, red insects that go on dandelion. Send me a picture if you have one. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Here's a really cool nymph from Borneo. Um, a nice, sharp-looking grasshopper. You can see the tiny little wing pads. Here they are that make it a nymph. Eee, right there. Oh, you can't see my cursor. Darn. But it's right in the center of the screen. <laughs> Hopefully you can see that wing, little tiny wing pattern that blends right in with its body. Um, makes sense that it's it. I guess I'm thinking about like how they manage their wing pads too, because those wings are really important for insects. They're really important for dispersing, for finding food, for finding a mate, um, for moving around, especially with their small size. So those wing pads need to be protected. Hello, beautiful nymph. Look at those cool eyes too. Let me go back to the... Kind of 60, maybe 50% is better. Anyway, yeah, really cool, beautiful grasshopper that blends in really nicely with its surroundings. Green. Oh, and then I guess I picked it up. <laughs> so here's size reference for this nymph. Yeah, it's really sleek. And here's it looking at it, its face. Hello, nymph. Yeah very slender face and has stripes on its face and also on its eyes, which is pretty cool to see. Yeah, I love the, the different eye patterns that insects will have. All right, what other nymphs do we have here? Oh, here's a little nymph, I think. It could be an adult, honestly, though. A little cockroach nymph, potentially, unless it's a wingless species. This is once upon a window in Borneo. So if you see eggs and then a bunch of insects next to the eggs that kind of equal the number of eggs that you see there, it's probably a nymph. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, if there's one insect next to eggs, it could be all sorts of different things, including the mom guarding the eggs or a parasite coming to take advantage of the eggs. Yeah, these with most of these, I use my macro lens. Yeah. And this was a fun situation too because they were in front of a like a really unique curtain. And you can't see any wing pads on these ones, but there's a complete absence of any sort of winged structures on the thorax. But I thought they were really cool. And the environment was also very unique. No photoshopping here. Um... Oh yeah, it was looking at you like, well, you are an unusual human. Yeah. <laughs> um, here's a nymph of some sort of hemipteran 
aka true bug, aka related to stink bugs, kitty dids, um, aphids, mealybugs, that group. Um, I don't know what family this is. Maybe Derbidae? There's a Derbidae family, I think, unless I'm saying it slightly wrong. Uh, some sort of plant hopper insect with really weird antenna, interesting antenna, but you can clearly see the wing pads on either side. Just like really nicely poised on the leaf here. It looks like it might be a female. It looks like there's an ovipositor down here too. But no adult picture, unfortunately, to go along with that. Um, <clears throat> that brings us back to our lychee bug. Here's a nice um, backlit, glowing, pink insect photo. <laughs> and here it is poised. You can see how skinny it is. Such a weird, such a cool, weird bug. Isn't it? It's just like not real. <clears throat> It's just, it's an amazing planet, amazing world that we live in <clears throat> with all these beautiful animals. <clears throat> you can see here the, the pokey mouth part that is characteristic of hemipterans as well. <clears throat> is this a nymph? What is this? Oh, this is a mystery bug, but with bad pictures, sorry. <clears throat> They're kind of blurry, um, but I don't know what it is, mystery bug. That looks like it's probably a nymph. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks kind of like a crustacean, too. Um, mm -hmm. And here's a cool nymph that has cool, nice wing pads and uh, also a very nice posture, I'd say. I think I'll call it the, these the posture bugs because they just look so like ready for action, so alert and attentive and ready to hop. This was certainly a hopper right here. Um, yeah, very cool, very intense um, white specks and like divots. I forgot the proper name for them. Pits, pitting on its thorax and on just in general. It almost looks like owl eyes here on its back. Very cool d structure and tiny little antenna. See these little... On either side of its eye, it has just like a little hair. That's the antenna. <laughs> Pokey mouth go, new mobile game. <laughs> yeah, that can be the hemipter version. Um, so yeah, this was an uh, exciting insect to photo nymph to photograph because it was super hoppy. Um, but yeah, you can see these wing pads right here, kind of on either side. Hmm. Um, it'd be, I'd be so interested to see it as an adult, but it just was not possible to rear it at the time. Um, here's a whole party of nymphs, lots and lots of little, lots of legs. <laughs> um, another photo that I realized that people who are a little squirmy about bugs would probably freak out or not be able to handle because of all the, all the body parts, all the antenna and the legs and the skinny little baby Katie dids that are sitting here on this leaf. They must be pretty close to being newborn. I don't know exactly how old, but um, it was really cool. I've never seen Katie dids on a leaf like this before. This was also in Borneo. Um, here's a nymph, a sassin bug of some kind with its little wing pads. There they are, so cute. Head out of focus, but wing pads in focus. Definitely some sort of assassin bug. And look at those spikes on the front legs. That's pretty cool to see too. Um, has some sort of raptorial front leg adaptation to grab the prey and eat it up. <laughs> okay. Another cool grasshopper with really beautiful eyes. I just love seeing, look how the pattern goes off eye, on eye, off eye with that white stripe. It's just like, why? Not like, why did that happen? What's the advantage of that? Does it look like it's antenna that way? Like, I don't know, but it's pretty cool. Um, oh, and then it brings us to some, do you guys know what this is? Who knows what this is? Indeed, amazing. 
Amazing, amazing. It's just um, but like sometimes it's so hard to believe all the beauty that is here with us. Um, we have a guest for stick bug. Good guess. It is on a stick. <laughs> underwater. It's underwater if it's not clear. Let me see if that's another picture to give. Oh, it's a little brighter, but a little blurrier there. Um, oops, that's a different aquatic bug. I can give you a clue that back here, those like feathery things are its um, gills. It breathes with those. Um, many of the aquatic insects will have, like the gills don't look like fish gills. They, well, maybe in some ways they might, but oftentimes they'll have appendages, body appendages that are very slender and look sort of like paddles. Um, but they're very skinny to allow for a lot, a high surface area to allow for oxygen exchange so they can breathe underwater. Um, Odonata, yes, this is a damselfly larva, nymph, damselfly nymph. I almost said larva, but it's a damselfly nymph because they go through incomplete metamorphosis. Um, so yeah, this is a damselfly nymph and you can see its wing pads right up um, on the, its back, like almost like a backpack. Um, and if, it, if there wasn't the warping from the water, we'd probably be able to see it a little more distinctly. And you can see one, two, three, four. You can even count all four of the wings that it has. But um, but yeah, here it is hanging out. It's, I'm going to guess it's, especially since it's near the surface like that, it was probably pretty close to being ready to emerge. Uh, all right, what other nymphs do we have? Oh, here's a cute little nymph. It's a little plant hopper of some kind. Um, this is in Pennsylvania with really awesome uh, spikes on its leg and a really cool eye that's a huge eye compared to its body. <laughs> oh, that's a huge eye. A uh, co huge colorful eye. And then the wing pads are like not that clear, but that's what's happening on its thorax. So uh, it's not even a head thorax abdomen situation. It's like a little hair antenna, eye, thorax, abdomen. Skip the head in this case. <laughs> um, chameleon like. Wait, which? The, the better to see you with. That's right. If you get close at all, this is going to hop away. It's good at hopping. Has a very cool, like, clicking, like, very unique, um, like, locking mechanism for activating the jump. There's a paper, popular paper in entomology about <clears throat> the devices that were involved that are involved in some of these little plant hoppers that makes that make them really efficient and effective hoppers. Um, here's a hiding, a hiding um, stink bug or or something close to that with its two wing pads on either side. They're very hardened wing pads. <clears throat> this is hiding in a leaf. New Jersey. Um, <clears throat> and now we are at some cicadas, which I talked about earlier. And I think that brings us to the end of my tagged yeah, cicadas, which will then climb up the tree. You can see the wing pads super clearly here. There they are. Hello, beautiful wing pads on the thorax of the insect. And then, voila. We have an adult that just hatches right out. Um, yeah, it's interesting. You can see a bit of water, a water droplet on this one too. <clears throat> I don't know. Well, it's probably just like leftover from uh, the metamorphosis process that happens. Myconium with butterflies too. Uh, so. So yeah, and here it is. Oh no, here it is coming out. But this this photo is actually of a, a bad, a sad situation or a bad situation where this there's a predation event. There is this bubbly feast going on where this harvest man, Apelionis, is hi Miron, how's it going? Is eating the cicada. I think that the cicada, 
The coloration to me suggests that it wasn't going to have a good molt anyway. And maybe it's an opportunistic situation rather than a situation where the daddy long legs here of Pelionis um, came over and was the cause of its death. It's definitely still alive too. I can tell it's not that old because it's still white and soft, but it's doomed. Doomed little friend, unfortunately. But um, doomed, but being recycled into the ecosystem because it's being consumed. Oh, like helping with its passing? Is that what you mean by it's only helping? Because if it wasn't being consumed by something else, then it would just be a long road to a long, like, kind of sad road to death because it would just be stuck. Can you imagine just being stuck? and not being able to move, and just eventually basically starving. Very sad. Not fun to think about. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, so that's... Whoa, what's this one? Oh, a little very, very, very long <clears throat> Katie did, which actually kind of looks at first glance like it'd be a spider or a walking stick itself, but... This is a Katie did nymph that was very, like you can tell it's all in with camouflage. It's just like, whoop, I'm not here. And here's a really beautiful, <clears throat> kind of blurry picture, so sorry for the blurriness, but really beautiful Katie did also from Pennsylvania with cool stripes on its antenna. <clears throat> um, was the wow for the, for this one? Oops. Wow, I like th I like the stripe that goes down its back. That's pretty cool. All the hairs. It's very a very slender one. It's like flat on the ground. Yeah, Frank. All the shapes they do, like their st postures and stances, are really fun and like. Dare I say, like, their personalities, too, in that case as well? Like, I think some of the personalities or their behaviors, I guess it is, um, like, are so different from one group to the next. Like, one might be, like, so into camouflage and just, like, hiding, like, default, always hiding in a hiding posture. And then <laughs> I'm thinking of one specifically from Borneo that always was, like, try hiding hiding I'm saying hiding this way because sometimes it'd be on like a very contrast it'd be like on my shirt but it was hiding um hiding behavior versus the ones that are like like look at me because I'm poisonous and posing and being very much more um not hiding basically um I mean for example these ones th these ones do not really hide they're really colorful. They probably have some sort of toxin in them, but, but yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's, we just looked at a bunch of nymphs. Um, and now I challenge you all to keep your eye out for a nymph. And when you find a nymph, let me know. And wow, this image I'm realizing matches your profile picture really well, Frank Man, with the blue and the red. <laughs> and a little bit of orangish yellow even for that matter it really matches so cheers to that <laughs> um yeah so yeah keep your eyes out for nymphs uh see if you can tell the difference between an adult insect and a nymph of course not all insects have nymph stages for example even wasps for example also they don't go through um incomplete metamorphosis they go through complete metamorphosis ants as well um so you're not going to find nymphs with those groups. But if you keep your eye out, um, I bet you'll be able to pick up and spot a leaf a wing pad. <laughs> Spider-Man pointing at the Spider-Man dot gif. I'll have to look it up later. Cool. All right. Well, what nymph shall we... Well, I like this nymph. This nymph is in my book, so I'll just end with this nymph.
So thanks guys for coming and checking out the word until word of the week for this week's until wordle. Make sure you stay tuned for next week's until wordle. And also make sure, please go ahead and make sure you connect with me on Twitch and also YouTube. <clears throat> and if you want to also sign up for my email list, which I know I haven't really used that much, but um, it's still helpful for keeping in touch and letting, <clears throat> giving updates and Patreon as well. So take care, everybody. Heal well, Walter. Um, and I probably will do a Galilee broadcast later today. I want to. So um, yeah, that's hopefully it's extra motivation to connect on Twitch if you haven't already um, as I shift things around and reconfigure um, the format of what I of my broadcasts and things. So cool. And uh, cheers, everybody. Take care. Have a great